Weather Barriers Done Right means weather barriers that go to work on more than just the sunny days. Weather includes moisture, wind, and rain, so it makes sense that a weather barrier would aim to stop all of that, because it's not always sunny like it is in animation land. Begin at the bottom of the wall where the house wrap is sealed to the foundation with silicone caulk to bridge the gaps between wood and concrete. Anyone who's ever run siding knows that if the house wrap isn't tight in the corners, it'll get sliced with a utility knife. So get it tight or say goodbye to your air barrier. Overlap the vertical seam 6 to 12 inches. Here the house wrap is run all the way into the corner and the next piece run out about a foot and a half because there's a couple of wall elevations at the bottom and the installers wanted to get a good overlap. Tape the seam with contractor tape. Run a bead of caulk along the top of the wall to seal the top of the house wrap. Sometimes it's easier to do this after the house wrap has been placed. Either way, overlap the higher pieces in front of the lower pieces so that water is always directed out. And don't stop at the top of the insulated space. House wrap is the drainage plane on gables too, so it has to cover all of the wall sheathing. It's a good idea to tape the seams before going too crazy with the cap stapler because a partially taped over cap can become a water injection system into the tape, which can become a trough for sideways water movement. So keep the cap staples away from the tape. The same is true at windows where there's a lot of flashing tape. Keep the cap staples about a foot away from the opening on each edge and leave plenty of room to splice the window into the wall. Another sneaky spot that can turn into a massive air leak is a cantilever. At a minimum, cover this opening with house wrap, but something rigid is better, like wall sheathing. Of course, both sheathing and house wrap is best, and that detail is a topic for another video.